and welcome back to Conjure Critiques in Parked Cars with Emily. Um, so when I got the notification for this show, I was like beyond giddy and excited because this is like the one thing I would see every single time. And actually the last time I had an opportunity to see this show, um, it got canceled because the lead singer had laryngitis. So, let's get into it. So the show was um, Max Bemis playing the entire album of um, Is A Real Boy, so Say Anything album, but it was just the lead singer, Max Bemis, who was playing. So, um, yeah, what again, when I got this notification, I was like, oh my god, it's so, <laughs> it was so good. Um, and again, I know I've said this in previous videos, but... Um, I was a little skeptical because it's a virtual show and I knew from the ticket that it was going to be done acoustically. Obviously, it's only one person, so their whole band was not going to be there. So I did have that expectation going in. and um, But I was still excited. And I again, it's like one of those things where I will always go see it just because it's one of the few albums that I can truly listen to from start to finish with just pure joy from again start to finish um so yeah so I was really excited about it and let's get into it so at first um <laughs> he didn't realize they were like live yet so at like 8 oh like 3 8 oh 04 they started um streaming and you know he's just like chilling on his couch with his guitar and just was like oh are, oh, are we are we filming um so that was kind of cute and fun um so he talked about how, uh, before he started playing, how parts of this album, like, really re require, like, a chorus of singers. And if you listen to the digital um, versions of these songs, they are, like, yeah, you can hear them in the background and people shout in the background, like, as a, as a whole group. Um, so definitely I agreed with that. And so, again, <laughs> there ended up being parts that I had kind of forgotten about that I was like, oh, yeah. That's interesting that it's like kind of awkward. So anyway, he was saying that it's awkward because there are parts that require a lot of people to be singing at once and that he was like, so you guys like need to sing along, <laughs> which I thought was cute, even though, you know, he wasn't going to be seeing us. And also this was interesting because um, he was not reading the comments as they were coming in. And I know some bands um, who do virtual ones read the comments. So he was just on his couch, totally away from um, like any stream of computer. So he was just basically playing it to his family in a way <laughs> um, and a camera. So that was definitely a little bit different than the ones I've seen before. So he started with belts and um, really liked the change of pace throughout the song. And I think it was intentional and not just uh the computer like trying to buffer itself and speeding things up <laughs> um but it was a really cool touch and um it was interesting because his voice seemed so raspy during that first song but I in like a great way not in like a like oh he seems like tired no no it was like really like a cool effect in um a lot of the lyrics to have that like kind of rasp to it so I really liked that um and then there were parts of Belts where he was, like, actually, like, more of, like, his voice was more of, like, a sing-songy voice. I don't know if that's even a good term to use. But um, it felt less like glottal fry and more like actual singing. So it was really cool. I really liked the mix of it. Um, and, of course, you know, it's Belts. So you're like, this song is so good. <laughs> um, and then after that, I played Whoa. And... Um, like really really loved the part right before the bridge it was so excellent oh so good and um you know really just love the end of the song in general and then to hear it acoustic I thought it was just absolutely phenomenal so that was really really awesome um and then after that he talked about how um he thinks that the original so years ago when he wrote this song it was like how it was talking about how um you know disempowered women were and um 
specifically the line about the pointy shoes and so he was like well I feel like we've like made a headway and like women aren't really expected to wear pointy shoes anymore um so he's like so hopefully this like meaning has changed a little bit and is not um you know as accurate as it was years ago so I thought that was kind of cool um that he felt like there was some change which is good and positive so that was nice um after that I played the writhing song um this is not an easy song to make acoustic <laughs> and again it's I mean it was great to hear but yeah I mean even he said before the bridge he was like oh gosh he goes this is gonna sound different from the version uh from the record because like it's just it's impossible to play acoustic so you, there were definitely moments where you were like "Ooh, yeah that doesn't work acoustic but he did a great job <laughs> and um definitely an interesting and again unique experience because he said he goes I don't even know if I've ever played the song acoustic before but um but yeah so that was um again it, listening to it acoustic you were like "Ooh," but then you were like okay I'm experiencing something that like not many people have or no one has before and this is the first time this song has ever been played acoustic so it's kind of special and it made it not so like oof. it made it more like oh okay like he's trying he knows and is totally aware and has given us fair warning that this is not going to be a super easy song um so yeah it was cool so he also mentioned after that song how he can't see anyone and how this is like a new experience for him but he's like still super nervous so again just like felt really genuine and was just like really a very um you know heartfelt sentiment and so I really liked that um after that he played Alive with the Glory of Love it is so good <laughs> um it was great because that song is great and it's one of my favorites but also it, I think it was even better because the um the writhing song was not super great and so you went from like this excellent effort and attempt to make a not acoustic song seem acoustic to a song that actually does work acoustic and you're like oh okay this is good <laughs> um so I really really liked that song um just so much better and and any subtle change that he did was just super fantastic loved the whole thing um especially the bridge the way he sang it was just oh, so good really good just loved it all um the one thing he did not do was say okay speed it up now um so that was missed but again i i get it it's acoustic and you don't have the whole band so so yeah, so that was uh, one thing that I noticed, but it was great. It was so good. And again, it's alive with the glory of love. So really could not go wrong with that song. It's so good. Um, yeah, so then they played, uh, he played Yellow Cat, Red Cat, I'm sorry, Yellow Cat slash Red Cat. And um, I really actually really enjoyed the song acoustically. Not that I thought that it wouldn't be good acoustically, but again, you know, <laughs> having the writhing song so fresh in my mind, I was like, okay, this is either going to be awesome, like Alive with the Glory of Love, or it could be like really not. Um, but I actually really, really enjoyed the acoustic aspect of it and um, definitely learned some new lyrics that I was like, ooh, I've had that wrong for years. So that was good, especially the second half of the second verse. I was like, oh, oh oh that makes more sense <laughs> so that was fun it's always fun to learn new things I guess when you're in a concert and you're like oh that's what that lyric is um so that was cool I really liked that song um talked about how <laughs> he cursed uh a lot on his album because he had just turned 19 and it was like the first time that he could like just openly curse to anyone because he like wasn't in school anymore um so yeah so that was like pretty fun fact and then of course it goes into the futile which starts with a curse word so I was like oh touche sir <laughs> touche um so that was actually really funny and it was like such a great way to start that song the song is great in 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 its own right but to have that like anecdote at the beginning and then go right into it was like oh <laughs> I see why you said that right there that was good that was good so I really liked that um really cool to hear the bridge of that song acoustic really really liked that part of the song um then he, they he played the spider song oh, I keep saying that because I'm so used to it sorry then he played the spider song um I thought it would be really tough acoustically especially like right when he started playing I was like "Ooh, this song is like gonna be hard um but I thought it actually worked really well so I was pleasantly surprised and um 
I really, really love the ending. Um, like, especially like right at the end, he like kind of stopped playing for a little bit, but then like played those last couple notes, which in my opinion are like very important to the song. So I was glad that he stopped playing to make it different, but then like was like, oh yeah, no, definitely got to play that last couple notes. So I was, I was very, very pleased with that. Um, and then at the end of the song, it was like, yeah, so I know that you couldn't see it on my face because I did a really good job of hiding it, but um, these like chords in this song are actually physically painful because they're not normal chords to play. And so he like showed us which chord and he was like, no, he's like, I was like this while I was playing it, but in my head, I was like, Ugh! like he was like freaking out. So it was really <laughs> cool to see. And, and again, like um, just an interesting thing that probably would not have happened at a normal show. So I really really liked um that little story at the end of that song so it was really cool um then an orgy of critics came next and um he said from the get-go that this was never played acoustically he goes i know for a fact that this has never been played acoustically <laughs> um and he's like it's definitely gonna be a rough one so again he addressed it from the get-go and it was strange um, but I honestly think he did like a fantastic job in terms of what type of song that was and how difficult it was to do. And just the fact that he like totally rocked it and you were like, okay, like, at least you made the best out of a really strange and non-acoustic forming situation. So again, um, like totally forgot about the bridge in that song. Um, definitely tough to do acoustically and and again it wasn't bad it was just like you're like oh yeah not not an acoustic song <laughs> um but yeah and I also never knew that he after at the end he said this is a Blood Brothers cover if you didn't know that and I didn't so that was an interesting little tidbit um and then it was so cute so he asked for a stage towel and his wife came in and said hello so cute <laughs> loved it <laughs> um so again just like really just the idea that he's basically just sitting in his living room doing this with his family there was really um kind of made it more special I think than just being in like a studio with professionals um so yeah so I kind of liked that touch and, and I thought it was again cute when he asked for a towel um so then every man has a molly um I really liked the changes at the end of the verse and um so yeah it was funny because <laughs> so at the end he was like so are people liking this and they were like no they're loving it and he was like oh they're loving it it was cute <laughs> it was really cute um so yeah he was again just nervous and it seemed genuine and it didn't seem like he was just like trying to you know make it like a thing that people liked seeing him it wasn't like an ego boost it was like genuinely like wait are, are am I good like should I change something about this so I was again just genuine moments that I thought were really great um after that played slowly through a vector and this is a really fun song for acoustic to be played acoustically I thought because it has that slower start and then speeds up and gets like a little bit more heavy so um so I really liked the difference between the two pieces and I thought that it worked really well um I really like the second verse um so right after that you get that kind of full part but then like it comes back in the end so it like kind of fell apart a little bit after the second verse and you were like oof not acoustic but then it came back at the end you're like oh yeah this is this is the jam <laughs> um so yeah it was good um again I really liked the different um like speeds that the song naturally goes through anyway and then I thought acoustically it definitely was different and and again even though it kind of didn't work right after that second verse I do think that when it came back in the end it really worked and you were like oh, oh yeah so good um so then right before we played this next song you talked about a lot of people have this as a tattoo and I like this song but I never really thought of it in terms of like a tattoo worthy song but after hearing it I like last night and or um yeah I like get it now I totally get it so um really loved the slower chorus um like anything that was between the verses I thought was excellent and um 
you know, because it was like a little bit of like a, like a heavier, but it was great. The bridge was fantastic. This was definitely maybe, I mean, listen, Alive with the Glory of Love is fantastic, but maybe my favorite part of the show up to that point. Loved the bridge. Like just, ugh, this song was so good acoustic. And then the end as well. Just so fantastic. Really liked this version and, and just, ugh. I totally get why you would get a tattoo of the song now. Like, again, it's not that I didn't like the song to begin with. I just never really thought of it as, like, one of my songs from this album. But after hearing it acoustic, I was like, oh, God, <laughs> this is so good. Um, so, yeah, so I really like that. Um, okay, so I love this next song. I really do love it. And I was very excited to hear it um, acoustic because it kind of already lends itself to being acoustic because of the songs on the album. This is the slower one. Um, so I Want to Know Your Plans was the next song. And um, he told the story of him like writing it for uh, when he was 17 for a girl. And he played it uh, on like a field trip on the way to a field trip to get her to like him. And it didn't work. <laughs> but everyone else was like, oh my God, this song is so nice. Um, so that was awesome. And it, uh, it's just so good such a good song it lends itself so well to being played acoustically but of course during the second uh verse the sound goes out and it was interesting because his mic said that it was muted so I don't know if someone by accidentally pushed a button or something I don't know what happened but I was like of course of course for this song it has to go out um but yeah so it came back and I was like okay this makes me feel better um but yeah, so I really loved the, like, it's like you get that stronger, more powerful ending. And I thought it was really well done. I really liked it. Wish I had been able to hear the whole song, but I uh, really liked it overall. Um, yeah, so he talked about how he was like a creative person and that he's like so thankful that he can continue to be a creative person and not have to get like a desk job because he would just not do well. Um and, you know, he thanked the fans for being part of this show in particular and how, like, this was helping his family, like, stay afloat in this crazy COVID time. And, um, yeah, so, again, just, like, very genuine sentiments. And I felt like he genuinely appreciated it. And he was like, yeah, so um, hopefully uh, we can do something like this again with maybe a different album. So that's, like, awesome to hear. And I'm, I'm glad that it was so encouraging. And it's just great. Um Okay, so then he played, <laughs> literally, <laughs> the reason I bought the ticket, he played Admit It. And even before he played the song, before the concert started, I was like, how is he going to get through Admit It? Because I know that um, there's another singer, at least for part of it. At least I think I know that. If I'm wrong, please comment and let me know. Um, and I was like, ooh, and it's just like fast and it's going to be crazy. Uh, but again, I was like, I, I mean, it's a chance to see Max Bemis play Admit It. So I was going to be there. Um, but yeah, so he said that it's a tough one. He's like, this is going to be a tough one. He's like, there's over like 500 words. He's like, I don't know if I'm going to get all of them correct. So like, don't like at me, like just to let, I'm just letting you know that this is a tough one. Um, so I knew I was not expecting this, but there were no woes in the chorus, pre-chorus, whoa, whoa, yeah, I guess that's the chorus. <laughs> so there were none of those, but again, wasn't necessarily expecting it, but that was just definitely a change. So I was like, oh yeah, definitely noticeable change. Um, I'm pretty sure he missed a line before the first chorus, um, but that's okay. And, um, then in the second verse, he definitely changed some words and I couldn't tell if it was intentional or if it was not intentional, but I actually really enjoyed the changes. Again, made it definitely feel unique and I felt like it was intentional <laughs> um, and I loved that. I really liked the changes and um, yeah, so a lot of pacing changes happened. Like he put a lot of pauses and again, totally by himself singing this song is tough and also playing the guitar at the same time so like it definitely was I feel necessary to get him through it so like not complaining 
but definitely interesting to hear like where pauses were where they n aren't in the recording recorded version and just like things like that like where like lines were kind of stretched so that he could eat, like eat, take a breath and kind of get his bearings um it was great though like still totally enjoyed it loved it um definitely changed um oh sorry so then <laughs> before I jump ahead so then he changed the lyrics to um fit the fact that it was a home show and uh, like a uh, in home show like and that he was getting um laid like later like tonight um <laughs> as opposed to the original lyrics loved it so much I just oh again like that is why you go to a show right to see something that you will never see again and those lyrics will probably never be saying that same way because it was like a once in a lifetime show and the fact that I got to see it was just like excellent I loved it and it just was such a great way to like start the end of the show right because you you know this is the last song and it's towards the end of the song it was just like ugh. It was so good. I'm so glad he made that change. And again, it was subtle, but it was fantastic. It was great. Um, and then he definitely changed the way he sang Drift at first. Like he just said it. He didn't sing it. And again, um, I'm not sure if that was necessarily super intentional. I don't know if he was literally trying to like catch up with himself. Um, but it was definitely, again, an interesting change, something different. And then he went back and, and the next time the Drift part came, he sang drift instead of saying it um but yeah so then the show ended he thanked everyone and um you could hear his, he like coughed to clear his throat and his daughter la started laughing and it was really cute um but then the sound went out so I couldn't really hear what else he was saying but um it, then when it came back on he was saying like send nice comments I don't want criticisms just nice things so again super cute uh super genuine uh yeah so I was a little bit surprised that he didn't play um anything from the bonus track and I know a lot of people in the comments at least were like oh I hope he plays that song um and he didn't play any of them I personally was fine with it <laughs> just because really like the main album is what I know and love and and again between alive with the glory of love and admit it and i want to know your plans and uh, just every song on that album belts whoa oh, so good <laughs> um so yeah so really really liked um the show thought it was really well done um i think i've decided that during this awesome covid time I'm going to give them grade letters as opposed to a 1 through 10 rating because I would like to rate it somehow. Um, definitely not going back to rate the other one that I saw because I don't really count that as a live show because it ended up just being a recording. But this one <laughs> was definitely live from start to finish, um, not just recorded. And um, so yeah, so I think I'm going to give this one... Whew, it's so hard because I love these songs so much. Trying not to be super biased. Um, I'm going to give this one an A minus. Like right between an A minus and an A. <laughs> um, like high A minus because um, there were definitely some songs that didn't lend themselves to being played acoustic he couldn't really control that though so can't really take off too much credit there um not being able to hear all of i want to know your plans was a little bit disappointing and then again i personally didn't mind it but i know that some people were upset that he didn't play the bonus track um but i really enjoyed it i thought the stories were great i thought he was very genuine in in telling those stories and in being concerned about you know how people were feeling and being nervous and like expressing that he was nervous and so yeah I really enjoyed the show I thought the songs were great and, and again it's just like so good to hear music that I love um especially this album it is just incredible and if you've never seen it live I highly suggest you do when um you know hopefully they go on tour again and play this album and uh, yeah, so let me know what you think. Were you there? Did you watch? Did you want to watch? Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.